Douglas Ducote, an American patriot by the grace of God, do solemnly swear to support and defend the Constitution of the United States of America from enemies foreign and especially domestic. So, uh, yeah, let's jump over uh, uh, to Jason on this. There's approximately two t- uh, farm attacks every single day and two farm brutal farm murders every single week for the last 20 years. Why has nobody said anything? By the time the mainstream media finds out about this, it's going to be too late. And I don't want people to remember us next year. No. I want them to stand up for us now. All righty, folks. We will be back after this with Maria. But first, please welcome Jason Barlett. He's a South African activist who is exposing the corruption in law enforcement and violence he and his family and others have endured in South Africa. Jason, thank you so much for coming on the show. And we are honored and blessed to be able to have you and to share your story, brother. Thank you very much, Doug. It's an honor to be here. And just thank you for your service and everything in your current service. That you, what you're doing is absolutely brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Jason, uh, many people, uh, including my audience, uh, don't have an understanding of what is happening uh, to white Christians and farmers in South Africa. Can you give us a brief overview of this tragedy that has taken place? It's actually pretty scary that you can that nobody knows because it's all over the media. It is clearly and distinctively being swept under the rug. You can ask each and every South African, as soon as you land at the airport in Johannesburg, if they're not rude and ugly to you and tell you to what are you doing here, they go and straight. You can ask anybody and someone will know someone that's been tortured or murdered or butchered or just downrightly attacked just for the basis of their skin color. Yes. Oh, my jeez. So, I mean, yeah. it's almost like what we're experiencing with ISIS terrorists in the Middle East. Yeah, I mean, but at least it, you've got someone fighting against ISIS. There's nobody fighting right. against nobody for, for us. Yeah. Nobody's helping us. I mean, you've got countless people being killed. There's been 396 attacks since the 1st of January um, to the, first, the end of October. And nobody says anything. 43 brutal murders. Half of these people are tortured, burnt with plastic, strangled. My cousin shot through the back of the head, strangled with fish nylon, and then called a white bastard and then burnt. I mean, how does this work? And nobody says something, Doug. And that's, uh, you know, what I was going to ask you was about, We, you know, we heard that your family's been directly affected by this, uh, <coughs> by these, well, these horrible crimes. Uh, who all in your family has been personally affected? In my <laughs> personal family, uh, first of all, myself, I've been involved in, with eight people try, tried to attack me on a farm in 2011. I fire off warning shots. They disperse. They come right back. You know exactly what they're there for. I've been attacked. I've been attempted to be stabbed and hit in the, hit in the face while they try to stab me. Luckily, I fought it off. And you go to the police and the police say, we won't help. My cousin Dion shot through the back of the, the head, comes out of the front of the eye while he's got his Born in Africa shirt on because we've been there since the 1820s. And look what he looks like. And this just because of, for what reason? They shoot him through the head and then they burn him. Just, and they call him a white bastard and then they go after the rest of the family. The two little girls had to witness this and they hit with crowbars and they hit my other cousin with a crowbar as well. Thank the Lord that someone actually came. Uh, my mother's um, cousin was actually chopped up and buried in in a the backyard. Nothing happens. My girlfriend's grandfather goes and gets tortured for three hours while they drink his whiskey and hit him to death and strangle him with his telephone cord. And then he dies two weeks later. And the doctor and the police say on his death certificate that he died of natural causes. Ursula, her grandmother, raped to death, dies of being raped to death by more than four or five people and it's she says to be have died of a heart attack this is ridiculous this is pure evil what is happening how can nobody say anything we need help it's all because of the fact that they're white and because they're christian 
Yes, it's because they're white and because they're Christian. Because the people are going out. And Julius Malemba from the economic freedom fighters, the so-called freedom fighters, who are, are in, imposing this land expropriation are causing money gra um, land grabs that have become worse than Zimbabwe. And they're going out and they're incenting violence. They're saying, shoot the farmer, shoot to kill, one bullet, one settler. I mean, what is this going on? It says we're not calling for the slaughtering of white people, at least for now, with those evil eyes, at least for now. So when is it going to come? Is it, is it going to come before the 1st of January, before I get to the White House? Are they going to call for all of us to be slaughtered? What's going to happen? You know, what, what sadly is happening right here in America, and I'm, I'm sure you've seen this, is we have these, and they're white, these far-left liberals that when they do talk about this tragedy that's happening over there, they try and form it in a way to say that, oh, it's justifiable for what the white man has done to the black man throughout history uh, with slavery and so forth. You know, I'm, I don't give a, whatever happened back then, that's not our problem. That's not, we're not responsible for that. We welcome all people of all color and we want to all get along and to, yeah to see that happening over there is just unbelievable it's 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 and it's unacceptable and more you know, mainstream media needs to be involved with covering this story and putting it to the forefront just like we're trying to do right now with our border you know we can't get anybody to talk about this anymore while people are flowing across with drugs and cartel and ms-13 gang members and are killing americans and slaughtering people well you've got that happening over there because you're white and christian and yeah exactly it's it's very difficult to wrap your head around what's happening not just in america but as we know now in Africa and all other places of the country. Uh, President Trump is aware of this uh, genocide. Uh, you know, we know that. Uh, have you seen any movement from the Trump administration? Uh, the United States, we know, is paying $510 million to the South African government. Are U.S. taxpayers unwittingly funding a white Christian genocide? I completely believe they are. Without knowing it, they are. Because the white person, as well as the poor black people in South Africa, are receiving zero. There are countless and thousands of black South Africans in, in South Africa that could run that country swiftly and smoothly. But they've got the barbaric corruption people like the Cyril Ramaphosa and those people that are in, the, in command. They are old tribalists and they are racists and they hate whites and they've got an agenda to kill us. Your president goes out and he denies to talk about these farm attacks. Yes, the American citizen right now is also responsible for paying those taxes and actually having people like us killed. We are out there. I've lost family members and I've lost friends and I've lost too many and it is too much. In the 25 years that they've been in charge, it has gone and they've broken the entire backbone. South African Airways, who used to have a landing spot at Heathrow at 12, between 12 and 2 o'clock, that was the first to go. And as a pilot, I knew that something was up. Now South African Airways is completely bankrupt. ESCOM is completely bankrupt. Six, seven, eight or ten billion dollars within debt. Everything's gone. None, none of the money, none of the physical charity, not even a piece of maize meal is going to those people or a bag of rice. They get nothing. It goes straight to government officials. They spend it and they are inciting violence against us. Every single day there's an attack. Just before me waiting for this interview, three people were murdered. Just think of that. Because we rescheduled by a few days, which is three people were murdered. Now, you're, you're over there now? I'm actually in the safety of Texas because this is what uh, the reason I chose Texas okay. because we've always known that this, you know, it's the closest in America that is to South Africa for us. We've always dreamed that way. And also an interesting fact, when I grew up, uh, the Dominican Republic of Congo was known as the most dangerous place in Africa. And I think you would also know that, right? It's yeah. scary to think that yesterday I went onto the internet and there are three times as many murders in South Africa than there is in the Congo. 
I mean, it's become a debaucherous anarchy. There's double murders. There's four double murders last month. Double murders and nobody says anything. It's swept under the rug. Um, do you see this level of violence happening in the United States if we don't stop the endless flow of refugees, uh, migrants, cartel, things you know that I've already mentioned, like what well, we're having the problem with the border right now? Uh, do you see that as something that we're going to end up faced with here if, if we don't do something to not only control what we have in America, but also help stop genocide that's happening in other places such as in Africa? I see it as a terminal cancer at the moment in South Africa. So that terminal cancer, you, you, you look at it and it's something that you, you don't know you've got it. And then you go and you delay the test, you delay the test and you say, well, I feel okay. I feel okay. And then all of a sudden you've got a basketball size tumor and you can't get rid of it. And that's exactly what's going to go happen in, in, in the United States because something comes in and it comes in and it starts festering and get worse and they change you from within. That's why you've got to protect your country from within. And that's where our country dissolved. It dissolved from within. And that's a warning to the Americans for yourself. Look, people, look, that's not what you want. That is anarchy. It's not freedom. The so-called long walk to freedom of Mandela Really? What rubbish hoax is that? It's a lie. Anarchy. 57 people killed all the time is not murdered. Is not, it's not freedom. It's anarchy. The people are suffering. They're crying out and no one wants to hear us because it doesn't fit their agenda. But you've got people like Adam Schiff saying there, oh, let's look after the people in Ukraine who are dying daily. But what about the people that have got the core same values, the farmers that could feed the nation, that they could let in here, give a protection plan, and then sort out the country because it's all good and well. I don't sit here with a plan, but South Africa needs immediate action. They don't need, okay, we'll help in, you know, we'll take a look into the situation. We need immediate action, whether they have to, and there's going to be so many people that want to stay and that's understandable, but they need protection. They've done nothing wrong. I was born in 1987. Why should I be persecuted for it? Because I'm white. I didn't do anything. Exactly. What, uh, tell us about this walk you're going to do. So on the 1st of January at 8 a.m., I'm going to be leaving from the state capital in Austin, Texas, and I'm going to go with the clothes on my back and a Bible in my hand, and I'm going to start walking in the brutal midst of the winter, and I'm going to walk to the White House. And I pray that those doors open for me and that action is taken. I apologize to each and every family member that will be killed during the time of me waiting before I start that walk and during that walk. I really do. But there has to be a call to action now. And if it's me sacrificing my one little body just so someone can see it, then I do that because nobody's done anything, anything at all. I tell you what, here, here's, here's what I'm going to do. Um, I want to be a part of this. Okay. We're going to continue exposing this. We're going to continue working with you with this. Uh, I want to see your route once you have it all planned out. Share that with my producer. Either we're going to meet up with you along the route or start with you. I don't know how far I get because I have a back injury from my service. Okay. But uh, I will endure whatever pain I can do and walk with you through part of this process. I wish I could go the whole way, but my body won't allow, allow me to do that. But I want to be with you, brother, side by side, either in the beginning of this or meeting up with you along the way, and we will bring live news to it. We will uh, share it on our show. Uh, we do live recordings while we're doing that, okay? Uh, God bless you. Thank you for Fine. sharing you. this with us. Uh, do you have, where, where, where can we find you, uh, uh, or at least the audience? Uh, you have any website going yet, or you have our Twitter accounts or what or whatnot? Doug, everything I'm doing is out of the, the bare faith of God. It's just that I've just started. I've only got a Twitter account. I don't speak on the behalf of any 
forums or anything like that or groups. I'm a Christian and I'm standing up for Christ and I'm asking my people to stand up with me in America, all the Christians to stand up with me and all the Christians, black, white, Indian, no matter what in South Africa, stand up with us and unite and let's go take our plead. You can find me at Buffalo Bartlett on Twitter. That's where you can actually see the live voices and the real true life stories are there on the Twitter, on my Twitter. The content is there. I can lead you in the right direction. Excellent. Thank you so much for sharing your story. We're going to be in touch. I want to be a part of this. I want to walk Wonderful. with you, brother. And I, and I will. Thank you, sir. Okay. I appreciate that. And, and all my people do too. Thank you very much. And God bless you too, Doug.